Hey there future prop traders, my name is Andrew Bloom and welcome back to the Discipline FX YouTube channel. I have a very special treat for you today. This past week I had the opportunity to interview Ruben, one of the team members of the 5%ers who has both run their marketing and is now involved in heading their trading desk and risk management. Ruben came to the 5%ers from trading options with a group in Tel Aviv and is very knowledgeable and experienced in risk management practices and trading psychology. So why am I interviewing the 5%ers? After hearing about a few of my students in the Discipline FX scalping course, either taking or preparing to take a challenge with this firm, I decided to do some research. Even though there's a lot of information about the 5%ers advice for their passing of the prop trading challenges on their blog, I wanted to talk to someone face to face to find out what separates the traders who pass and stay with the firm for the long term from those who are stuck in a cycle of challenge failure and retries. I'm not exaggerating when I say that this interview with Ruben completely hit home for me on some of the key risk management principles and by the time we were done chatting I felt so much clarity on what successful risk management looks like for their specific prop trading model. Hint. It has nothing to do with whether you're a scalper or a day trader. But I'm going to stop right here and let Ruben's ideas tell the story. Before we dive in though, be sure to click that subscribe button below if you want more tutorials and insights on not only trading discipline, but also the best practices that will turn you into a consistently profitable trader. Okay, roll the interview. Um, okay, so my first question is, if you could examine all the traders who do pass the challenge, uh, who are able to stick with the five percenters over the long run, what do they have in common? Okay. Uh, this question is very interesting, first of all, and I made a webinar, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, talking exactly about these questions and all I found the traders have in common. Uh, I don't want to spoil uh, the webinar, so I, I, I can invite you to look this. Um, this is very interesting and you should, you should like you will look how different traders uh, manage their uh, big account we have in the virus, but the main two things uh, would be risk management. So they have a perfect risk management uh, strategy. So they know how to allocate uh, at some point when the market is much volatile, when the market is less volatile, when the market is uh, different, they know how to uh, you know, allocate the risk differently. Uh, and their risk management is very uh, you know, consistent and viable for the long term. So that's the first, uh, the first main things that uh, traders have in common. The second thing is uh, psychology. Okay? They know well how to recover from a psychology uh, effect. Uh, and that's at the end, or a uh, tra big trader that, that we have here, uh, succeed time after time and go their account. We have traders that's actually managing big accounts and they had some losses because trader much, must, uh, not must, but should loss um, between the levels and, and when you pass the level. So losing is part of trading, but they all the time know how to recover and, and know how to, um, to be great with the psychology. Uh, so that that's the, the main two things. But again, uh, the, their strategy is completely different. Okay, you, you have, we, have, we have a guy that use a lower time frame. You will have another trader that use higher time frame, different lot size, different uh, pairs. So their strategy is completely different, but those two assets, uh, that is risk management and uh, psychology, uh, we, can, um, we can find that those two, uh, those two worlds and those two assets um, Again, uh, they, they use this very well uh, in long term. Uh, so so that's the two things. And, and what would you say is a common range of risk per trade that these traders usually lean towards? Okay, so uh, in the drivers, uh, we have uh, you know, a rule that says, uh, let's say in the low risk program, that says the risk should be like 1.5%. Okay, uh, this is only the rules, and this is uh, we don't want someone that risk like three percent on a trade. Again, by average, um, I would uh, advise, and that's what I'm always doing, uh, risking not more than zero point five percent. So that should be the risk uh, you should allocate maximum per trade. Again, 
it, it can be less, okay? It can be 0 0.2, it can be 0 0.3%, but 0 0.5% should be the maximum risk you should allocate per trade. Um, and again, it's different. If you're a scalper, uh, you know, uh, and 0 0.5% can be very fast. Um, so that's something you should uh, manage with uh, your position and implement in your risk management strategy. Uh, but 0 0.5 should be the maximum. And you know, there is no minimum. If you have uh, 100 position per day, you can risk 0 0.1%, 0 0.2%. You can uh, diversify uh, your risk time after time. So that's way, folks. Fantastic, thank you. Um, the second question is basically the reverse. What right. do you see in common of traders who fail the challenge maybe fail multiple challenges and just don't seem to make it. Um, but by answering these questions, uh, that can be linked to the, to the trader that um, passed uh, big challenges and, and, and big accounts uh, with us. Um, if we talk about trader that don't succeed to pass the first challenge and the first level, generally it's a lack of experience uh, in trading and in financial markets. Uh, it's also a lack of risk management. Generally people that fail the first level there are people that don't know too much or to manage the risk. And we will see traders that don't put stop loss. We will see traders that uh, use a, a big lot size in trading. And you know, our leverage in, in the fibers is uh, compared to other uh, a bit low. But again, people uh, with one to six leverage and even one to 30 for the aggressive program, they open too much uh, risk for one position. And, and that generally, uh, or it can affect the trader that failed uh, in the first level. Um, the second thing for people that pass the first challenge and have a profitable strategy, let's say trader that pass uh, one, two, three levels in a row, um, these traders have a high capacity in trading, he have a high skills, he have a, a good profitable strategy, but at the end he will fail. And, and the most um, explanation of what those kind of traders fail at the end it's because of psychology, okay? When you have a, a, a long profitable uh, strategy that you can uh, make a living uh, from this strategy. And at the end, uh, trader that, um, you know, over trades and over risk, uh, instead of sticking to their habitual strategy, uh, that generally leads to uh, the failure and, 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 the, and the, the brewing of the account. And that generally happens uh, when people that ask good in trading are very skillful, but when you, you pass multiple level, uh, psychology uh, is very, can, can be very effective. Okay, so uh, that's maybe the, the main thing. This is really helpful to hear from you. Okay. Thank you so much, Ruben. I really oh, appreciate it. You're welcome, Andrew. I hope you got as much out of this interview as I did. What I appreciate is that Ruben gave me clear numbers instead of vague descriptions of what appropriate risk management looks like for their challenge and funded rule set. Ultimately, what will help you pass their challenge is to work with a strategy that is profitable over the long run and have the patience to take a very small risk per trade, such as 0.3 to 5% of your account per trade. Furthermore, you'll need to be willing to stick with that for weeks and months on end. Also, Ruben had told me about some people who seem to perform better when they can risk more or less during key changes in market volatility. If you wanna learn more about his thoughts on risk management, be sure to check out his webinar on what the traders who hold the highest account sizes with the five percenters have in common. You can find the link in the description box below. So if you're thinking you can scalp the market with one to one and a half percent risk per trade for a quick win, think again. Having the patience to go slow is the biggest discipline difference between long-term success in day trading and continual failure with prop trading challenges. If you agree with me and Ruben, be sure to let me know by hitting the like button below. Thank you all for watching today, and I wish you the best of strength and luck in the markets. Take care.